Hey, how is it going, Simon? It's it's going good. Uh, I am yet. Uh, I'm still healthy. Uh, hopefully, that will um, stay the same. Uh, some of my family not so healthy right now, but uh, they're they're on the mend. Um, but today we're going to basically talk about startup news in the Czech Republic, and then you're basically going to talk to that, and then afterwards I'll give a bit more of an international flavor of what's going on in the startup world. Right. Yeah, it seems everybody's focused on helping out with the coronavirus situation here in Prague, as it's covered in today's article in Czech Rounge. For example, Czech startup Dodo, who came with simple-to-use courier service joint forces with Košík, CZ, Pilka, Hopigo, B-Rider and Nesnežino. They together introduced a volunteering program for those who want to help with food and medical delivery. Similar activity has been introduced by Sousedská pomoc.cz, who now associates 3,000 people in 620 cities in Czech Republic. That's amazing. Super. And Okay, very good. Yeah, it seems that securing fundings uh, is an everyday topic for, well, I wanted to say startups, but basically for everyone today. 14 well-known Czech restaurant owners who together employ more than three and a half thousand people published an open letter to the Czech government announcing that the state is obliged to compensate for the damage caused to companies and individuals causally related to crisis measures. If the government won't take an action, they are afraid most of the restaurants in Czech Republic will go bankrupt. And that's not funny at all. I saw a report stating that a lot of Czech restaurants don't have financial pillow for more than two or three weeks. That's scary, man. It really is. I, I think the coronavirus has highlighted just how many businesses are living month by month, or you know, they may have a couple of months. Um, we're seeing this in, in the hotel trade, restaurant trade, but now also like you're looking at major airlines desperate for bailouts and companies like Primark, the huge fashion retailer actually of Irish origin, could be shuttering their UK businesses really soon. So they're dealing with some very tight margins and this kind of completely unprecedented event is going to have to get the regulators to do things they're not comfortable with. And I think even the UK is announcing massive measures to deal with these kinds of issues. I think the Czech Republic, for me, um, there seems to be maybe less of a safety net for independence, of which you and I are, are in, in that in that boat. Uh, so there will have to be some things done there. I understand we will get some social relief, like uh, the, our social costs can be reduced for a few months, but uh, frankly, that won't save many people. And there are a lot of people I know who are in a situation where they have a month or two um, of, of savings and after that you know it's it's you know back to the parents or, 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 or worse so the governments are going to have to step in and I think those restaurant guys have a good point you know it's a key industry in in Prague and, and uh, it's being hurt uh, insanely by this crazy virus yeah however there are some bright sites and new opportunities with online businesses for example look at the gaming video streaming or e-learning they all could do actually partial resistance i believe mm. that leads me to this czech startup called blabu whose mission is to help with english conversations from your home it could provide an effective substitute for classical teaching pupils and students can do tasks on blabla talk about traveling but also about computer games the important thing is that they improve their english and use the time when they have to be forced home effectively explains Peter Kovacic, founder and CEO of Blabu in the Czech Crunch article. I agree. So there will be opportunities for some companies. Yeah, yeah. it's it, for sure. I think online education is one of those key ones. And you can see so many children now are going to have to be educated by their parents. <laughs> and those parents will want some help uh, from, from online sources. Uh, of course, we're now using Zoom. And I think Zoom are, are going to notice some very serious growth obviously they're doing uh video sharing and and, and uh, conference call kind of kinds of software so those kind of companies are going to do well in in this crisis uh i just don't think there, there, won't, there won't be that much of a boom in those kind of strange industries but we're all having to get used to this new way of work you know uh, staying at home and and uh you know not being able to go into the office which uh, which i do miss truthfully yeah um, same here same here <laughs> Well, sad news for frequent Lime renters. 
Lime is pulling its scooters from the streets of Prague. Some people will actually like that idea. Not many locals fancy Lime. Crazy tourists, right? But for Lime worldwide, I suppose it's not very bad. It's it's very bad. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I have to say the first time I was driving or taking a Lime around Prague, I loved the sense of freedom that was was there, and I and I I, I took it to heart. However, later on, I could see the obvious risks of people driving at 25 kilometers an hour with no helmets. And, right. uh, and um, as we both know, Prague has uh, significant uh, over tourism issues, although that's been dealt with quite well in the last three weeks. Um, so I think Lyme won't be missed as, uh, for example, the beer bikes won't be too missed either, I, I imagine. Oh. <laughs> as you as you live in the that beautiful area of Letna, uh, that's uh, a, a common enough site that I'm sure they musically go past your apartment from time to time. But, uh, I, you know, Lime's business in Prague was probably not so huge and they have other good good markets. But, uh, yeah, I think Prague are, are, are not going to miss the Lime too much. Right. But this one I really like. Mappy CZ, which is like Czech Google Maps, offers voluntary location sharing that could help to lower uh, the COVID-19 spread by fast investigation tracking. That looks like a great thing to do, I believe. I wonder if Gmail is preparing something like that. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I've seen what they've done. In fact, I, I shared um, I shared their news on, uh, on LinkedIn to a, a politician I know. I think it's something that could be used in, in, in more places to quickly to quickly track uh, the spread. I mean, it's a great initiative, uh, you know, so super that, you know, it's really showing the good side of startups and entrepreneurs you know, some people taking this so seriously and they're for, you know, really putting money second to just, you know, trying to help people out because we all right. know, for, you know, the, as, how quickly we can get this sorted out or at least stop the spread, the more chance of us getting back to some kind of, of normal, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Simon, your turn. My turn. So uh, basically, I'm going to talk a little bit about the international news. Um, uh, you know, Sequoia are one of the major investors in the US. Uh, they've been involved in some of the very biggest tech companies from the, as I remember, it's from the 70s. Uh, in 2008, they put out a famous presentation that, that said, you know, the good times are over or RIP, rest in peace, good times. And they basically told startups what they had to do to survive the after a, you know a major crash as there was in 2007 so uh that was penned or called the 50 slides of doom you know so they basically said you know, <laughs> it's time to <laughs> tighten your belts so you're going to go bankrupt so now they've done a similar one called black swan uh which you know highlights these kind of unusual events that no one can predict and some people say you can but uh they they're, they're so they they put that out on uh, early march in march 5th which is my which is my birthday, by the way, which is a little uh, healthy coincidence. And they basically said the key message is cash and revenue fall faster than expenses. So companies, startups have to really trim back and just acknowledge that this is going to be a difficult time. So you've got to look at your headcount, look at your marketing spend, make sure you're getting that right return. So that Sequoia presentation is one that's worth looking at if you're more into the investor game, whatever. Um, in more general news, uh, I should say, by the way, that was available on Crunchbase. Crunchbase is a, a, a website uh, with the, from the TechCrunch family. Um, there was other news from uh, tech.eu. I read that Apple is hit with a huge fine. So you know, Europe is still hitting the big companies. Uh, I think it was the French who did it this time. It's over a billion dollar fine for Apple. So uh, that might uh, help the French a little bit in, in collecting some, some cash. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, Netflix have announced that they're reducing the data that they send by 25%. I think we'll still get access to our content. It just probably won't be in you know, beautiful high definition. But uh, that's going to, when I read it first, I thought, my God, I'm going to cut my Netflix. And then in this kind of scenario, that's the last thing you want to hear. But Henry, some companies are still raising money. So Aura, the famous finger tracking uh, device, uh, health tracker, they raised some big money, as did Penta and Quantum Machines. So there is still some big rounds out there, but one imagines they had been obviously working on those for three or six months, and they've kind of closed just in time. Uh, on Sifted, which is another really interesting website for startups, 
they're talking about government measures. And to be nice, it's actually a nice thing, the tech.eu link to the Sifted article, the technically competitors, but they're saying that Sifted are talking about government measures in countries like UK and France, and there's a lot of money being pumped in to help with giving grants, uh, more flexible loans, and uh, also some payment delays. So for example, if you owe some, some, uh, some taxes, you know? So uh, they didn't mention the Czech um, government. Uh, do you know of anything the Czechs are doing on, on this to help startups other than the um, relief for independence or the Osovice, the um, reducing the, the tax burden, at least for a few months? Yeah, they did that. Plus, they are thinking about offering a loan with no interest. So I, I believe they, they allocated 1 billion crowns for that, but a lot of details are missing or I don't know them yet. Uh, so fair enough. So it's about 40 million euro in the pot there for, for Czech startups. Okay. Um, a little bit, you know, I've, I've been talking to some entrepreneurs about what's going on in their world. And uh, from what I'm hearing is that um, there's a lot of stories like this where uh, one of my friends knows a company who are in a very competitive A round. So lots of venture capitalists dying to get a little piece of this action. And now, as of the last two weeks, they've got nothing. So absolutely zero. And I, that story will be, uh, re, you know, rebounding across lots of different uh, entrepreneurs and new companies as they're dealing with this new reality and people pull the, the cash. Uh, pretty much any known angel or business angel is being bombarded now with different kinds of emails. Some of them coming back saying, we just can't read the amount of emails we're getting for the sheer volume and some incubators as well who had um, committed cash for, you know, upcoming rounds the next two or three months, written emails, all, all required uh, proofs and they just are getting pulled, you know, so it, it is going to be a very, very tricky time. Uh, for for startups and let's hope that there are enough investors out there who get the sense that um, this is a long-term game and let's hope that in seven or ten years you know these great startups are you know after a little bit of a bump in the next six to twelve months that they can actually recover like we all hope we can so let's be honest uh, startup cash uh, flow is not the most important thing right now, but for small business owners who are taking these big risks, that's, you know, it's everything to them, yeah, you know, yeah. so it's a big, big deal. Um, my final point uh, is just from Robin Vouters from tech.eu. He's talking about on Twitter about shitty venture capital behavior. So this is where if you've committed to do a round with a startup, it would be ideal at this time that you basically come in and stick to those terms and try not to do what they call down rounds, which is basically investing at the startup at a lower price than they'd previously raised. So there's a, a real call out to call out those venture capitalists if they are taking advantage of that. So, I mean, I see lots of articles about uh, hedge funds who are, you know, made a billion dollars by shorting the airlines. Now, one thinks these people are never going to change, but if venture capitalists and investors are talking about being a real part of the ecosystem, it's now a very good time for them to, you know, show that they mean, you know, ethical business. But uh, I suspect that will be falling on deaf ears and there'll be a lot of startups taking much cheaper rounds. And uh, let's hope great founders don't get fucked too much. Right. Good. So I guess that's that's all for our weekly digest yeah let's let's hope that uh more and more uh initiatives are coming out on the coronavirus and uh, i wanted to say one final thing which made me laugh uh henry um on the 15th of march they announced that irish pubs should close on the 16th of march an irish company announced that they had a new coronavirus test kit that would reduce the time to just minutes and the, the first batch is available next week just showing what us irish can do once wow the bars are closed okay thanks <laughs> thanks thanks henry okay. <laughs> look forward to speaking to you next week about this same here guys thank you for listening make sure you like our facebook page facebook.com henry and simon you'll find all the news there take Have care a good one